Hi everyone, welcome to the Arts Factor YouTube channel. My name is Nicholas Tobias, and today we're going to go through the best tutorial on how to mix colours for beginners. I've been teaching for over two years now, so I'm well aware of the difficulties the beginner artists face when mixing colours. So that's what we're going to do today, a masterclass on how to mix colours for beginners. So stick around to the end, and you can see some useful tips and tricks. Okay, let's go. So I have a setup here, I've got my palette on the left and I've got some colours and some paper on the right there. Uh, I think it's important to talk about preparation before we start because you need the right materials, you need to be prepared before you go out and try and mix colours. Now I've got a blue, a red, uh, a red and a yellow and we're going to be using them today um, and they are the three primaries, right? They are the uh, essential colors that you can use to mix a whole variety of colors uh, and you don't really need much else maybe a complement to this would be a, a darker color um, but you can do so much with the three primaries uh, when you're starting out mixing colors and many artists just use the three primaries in most of their paintings maybe they'll add one or two but that's okay um, so i've got this blue cobalt blue i've got rose madder and I've got New Gambodge there, so I'm going to use a red, yellow and a blue for this exercise. And I recommend uh, having tubes, you can obviously have pans when you're starting out, it's very good. But at some point along the way, you might want to have a palette like this. This is one from Holbein, and you can actually squeeze them out onto the side. And then when you want to um, paint with them, you can use a spray bottle. And you can just give it a good old spray like that, just down the side of the colours and then that re-energizes them, wets them up, and then you can actually use them and mix up colors from them very smoothly. Um, I've got a brush here, just a very medium brush, um, Asian style brush, very, uh, comes to a lovely point, but holds enough water. And I, I would suggest having a medium sized brush or even a large brush um, when doing most of, your, most of your paintings and then going in with a smaller brush just for the detail. That's really important. So um, I'm going to be using this, it holds enough water so that I don't have to go back into the water and reapply and mix things again and again. I can get in the water, mix a whole bunch, get the, the blue, for example, here, and just really mix a nice healthy amount. And I'll make sure that I've got enough on there to then do what I need to do. Um, so that's really useful. I'll have like one palette here one part of the palette, I should say, which is for more cool colors. And I'll go over here for warm, or I'll mix them in if I want more of a gray. So have enough space to mix, uh, use a big enough brush, and um, have the three, the three colors, the three primaries. So let's get into it. First of all, we need to um, think about color mixing. Um, so what the first thing to do really is to get out a blue onto the paper right here. And I'm just going to explain the three primaries and what they create when they work together. So I've got a blue there. Let's mix up a nice, oops, I'll go for the rose matter here. And I'll just pop that over here. And then we have our yellow. So I'll make sure my brush is nice and dry. Uh, nice and free from the pigment, I should say. And we have ourselves the yellow. Now, when you're color mixing from these three, these are primary colors, and then you have secondary colors. So essentially, that's two primaries mixed together. So we can make one there, we can make one there, we can make one there, right? So we've got blue, we've got red. Let's mix them together. You can do that on the palette here. You can even do it on the paper. And I'll talk about the benefits of that in a moment. But really, you want to mix them up nicely, quite healthily, pop them right there, and you've got yourself a purple. Um, simple, really. Uh, and it's just about learning what colors make what. And once you get that in your head and it becomes second nature, you'll be very quick to move around the palette. You'll just be mixing colors in and out and changing the ratios between the different primaries. And that's sort of the most important thing really, how much yellow is there, how much red, well I've got, I've mixed this up here, you can see that it's quite ready, so if I put more yellow into it, it becomes more of a, 
a straight orange. So you're always thinking about the ratio. So that is sort of a, a straight central orange. Mixing colors is one of the most important aspects of watercolor painting, but to really immerse yourself in this world and improve your painting skills, it's good to be under the guidance of a teacher. I've trained many students over the years and they are now successfully creating their own masterpieces. So why don't you check out the link in the video description where you'll find access to a free watercolor marathon where I go through both basic and advanced secrets uh, within watercolor. So check that out. I also have a new course um, where you can go through a more comprehensive um, overview of watercolor. We'll go, we'll go through composition, perspective, color theory, uh, and using more water on the paper, more water and more pigment. So that's a really exciting one to look out for. Um, another one coming up is Atmospheric Light in Watercolor, a new course that I'm putting together, and stay tuned for that. Uh, then we have blue and yellow. So we can do the same exercise. We've got a bit of blue there. You can wash your brush between getting them if you want. You don't want to mix up the palette. You can see I've done that a little bit. But when you're in the heat of the moment doing a painting, Sometimes you, you do not care about the state of your palette and you can see that I've got bits and pieces everywhere, but you can just use these to make greys. Mix all the colors on your palette together and you'll generally make a gray. So I've got a green here. So this is a bit more of a sort of a, a nice tropical green. So I'll pop that on there. And there you have it, two primaries mixed together to create a secondary color. Uh, and that's really important um, to try to try and get a hang of this sort of simple setup. Uh, and then you build on that and then you think, okay, I've got a green, but I want to go more of a yellow green. Or maybe, all right, so I'll just add a little bit more yellow to it. And I'll just pop that there. And there you go, you've got yourself a highlight on a tree. And then you've got maybe more of the middle part, and maybe you want more of a bluey green. So same thing, but we're actually going to mix up far less yellow and more keep the blue. And we have ourselves potentially a shadow color. Um, maybe it needs to be a little thicker. Or you can use that for the shadow. So you've got all, all three parts of making a simple tree by just using these two colors. And that's color harmony. They're going to work together because you know that because you've mixed them with the same two colors, you just change the ratios of them. So it's, it's, it's really useful. Um, and color harmony is a, a really nice thing to think about when you're painting because you want all the different colors to sort of work together Maybe there'll be a rogue color that will stand out because that's what that's where you want your attention to go. But in general, you do want a nice cohesive painting where the colors sit well together, they complement each other. And the best way to do that is to try and mix colors uh, from the same three primaries as much as you can. And if you are struggling and you need a bit darker, you can go, I can add some Payne's gray. If I feel, oh, I really want it to be quite, quite cool, Quite a, quite a strong dark there. And this is essentially now becoming purely blue, but I've added a little bit of yellow, get more greeny. And we go to the next level. That's the darkest bit maybe there. Again, we've reintroduced one color if we need to go that way. So mixing on the paper is another next level you can go from this. So these are lovely colors. We mix them on the palette. They're all very clean and crisp and clear. And sometimes you want that. But there are other times where you really want a sort of a, a gradient within your, within your colors that you put on the paper. Uh, it can be maybe just the light catching it and you want a bit of variation, a bit of texture. And so what, we, what I like to do really is have, let's say I'll, I'll start with the, I'll start with a blue. If I want to mix a purple, I'll get a blue in there, like so. And I don't mind that this is completely blue, even though I'm trying to get to purple. All you need to do, because it's still wet, you have that time to, to move into it. 
you can then build up a purple as you mix on the paper um, and part of it can be more red part of it can be more blue but when that starts to tighten up tighten up really means start drying and it loses all that all that water the part the um, pigments the, the minerals in the pigment will start to separate um, depends on the brand depends on the color some do that way more than others and that's called granulation but we can get into that in another video um, but for the meantime different colors do different things and it's good to experiment with them um, but mixing on a paper is so great so let's just do one more we've got ourselves oops I've done that already on the palette so I'll go for a yellow And this yellow, yellow and rose matter mix so well together, so let's have some fun with that one. And we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that in a bit. Um, but what I'll just talk about now is how to mix greys. Okay, so that's the last thing, really. Um, what are greys? Well, greys are the combination of the three primaries. So important. Um, to get a grasp of the greys because really a lot of things are a mixture of the three primaries in different proportions and a lot of the painting that you see will be working with um, either sort of more yellowy ready greys or more or cooler we could say bluer greys so cool is a cool grey is one where it's leaning more towards blue or sort of cool purple and then you have a warmer grey, which is more leaning more towards either more red or more more orange or brown. And you can think of colour as temperature. So this is a strong yellow, very nice and warm, reminds you of summer. Um, you would use it for different things, you can use it for things on the beach. And conversely, you've got cooler colours, which just remind you more of, of shadows, of water. But um, you can use that principle of warm and cool to change the atmosphere or the effect of parts of your painting. Um, so that's important. We've got ourselves a blue here. Where have I got space? Right in the middle, just to confuse you. That'll be right. We've got ourselves a blue. Now we're going to mix on the paper and add a bit of red to it. It, that gives it a bit of a purple and then I'm going to add yellow to it which I don't want to get too much because that will be not good and then we just simply keep doing that until we get to a nice grey colour so that's a bit greeny so we need a bit more red so if, it, if you're leaning towards one side right you just use the opposite primary so now that's gone there and we just keep going you can have some patience with this it, it's a bit um, more tricky to mix straight on the paper but we're finding ourselves with a sort of a sort of warmish gray and I can cool that down by adding a blue into it and we're just finding a sort of nice neutral gray which is, is what we found there um, and that's simply just being a little bit patient and working with the three primaries and if you do move towards orange you know that you've got yellow and red that you've used to make it and therefore if it's a bit too orange and you want to go to the opposite you just look over and find yourself adding that blue the other primary um, and so that's just a little trick and another trick you can do is mix two primaries up so red and yellow to make orange which i do on the palette here um so when you're mixing you know, on the palette this is a good way to start i like to start with red and yellow if i'm doing a, a gray and then i'll i'll use those as a sort of constant and i'll just add a bit of blue to that and i'll just keep adding until i'm at the blue so at the gray that i like so 
I'm adding, adding. It's quite, it's a nice warm gray. This could be like a gray building. Maybe it's the sun's hitting it a little bit or it's just, it can be whatever really. And you keep adding the third primary so that you end up with the gray that you want. And you can have a gradient on your palette. I'll have a bit of more yellow here so I can mix that in a bit and make it more of a yellowy gray. And maybe we've got a bit of blue on this side. So I will just mix over there. And then you've got yourself a gradient on this palette, which you can then use if you don't want to mix on, on the paper for whatever reason or it's a particular area and you need direct color. You've got yourself a bit of fun there. And then you go for it. And the good thing about having a bit of a gradient is you pick up different colors on your brush and they will make ever so subtle variations on the paper. Look at that. So we've got a bit more red on this side. We've got a bit more blue through there, a bit more yellow. And if you're doing a building, for example, and you're painting a whole wall, the last thing you want to do is make a very solid box, which has the same color, very boring, very easy and very uh, well, lacking in sort of character, you could say. But you do the same wall by adding a bunch of different colors on your brush, mix them nice. You, you can have control over that by where you place the three primaries. So you've got your orange here and you, you can add in the blue. And when you do that, you pick up a whole bunch of stuff and if it's not completely mixed, even better, even better. Because then you just go in and you just create interesting, interesting walls. And if you hold the brush on the side, you can create some texture as well. And you fill it in where you don't want too much white. Even just a little few sparkles will go a long way to create a nice sort of wall there. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is come back to the color mixing on the paper because you can see that I've got more red on this side, more blue. But if I actually bring this up a bit and really show you, there are minerals that have separated a little bit. And you can see that there's such an interesting character to this wash. And it's so different to the sort of pur straight purple that we had here. It's also got a little bit of, of separation going on because you have mixed the two. But you're allowing more space to do that by interacting um, the two colors with more water. And they separate out more and create some, some different texture. And it's the same thing here. It's a really lovely orange that you've created, but you've allowed yourself to have some yellow and some red on the other side. And that, what would you suggest? Would you say that's more interesting or that's more interesting? Um, and, and really that's where we're trying to go. We're trying to mix on the paper more, as much as possible. Um, but we can still keep some control. Um, but it's good also to have some spontaneity and just let things flow and have a sort of interesting surface here of different types of greys along which again is maybe a little bit more interesting than what we've done here. So I hope that was helpful. Um, and there we go. I hope this was helpful for you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's lots of stuff going on at the moment. We will really help artists to draw and paint better and immerse themselves in the whole watercolor world. Um, you can sign up to my course in the link in the video description. So I'll see you there. Take care.